watch Seth review of Dwarf Fortress. I don't know what that is. Seth Dwarf Fortress. Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Today, the I'll be covering a long running cult classic that's still updated and developed to this very day. A game which chronicles the lives and accomplishments of stumpy alcoholics as they struggle to avoid sobriety. A game where the most ludicrous events take place daily, where civilizations rise and fall just because someone left a Necronomicon in the public library. A game where the UI is so useless and convoluted that you'd honestly have an easier time playing Microsoft Excel. And I suck at Microsoft Excel. I'm a performance artist. Deep, dark fantasy. Yeah, of course. Come on, college boy. On my shoulder. Honestly, this whole Dwarf Fortress topic starting is just so that eventually down the line I would watch this video, right? This game fucking sucks. <laughs> Speaking of course, about Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress is less of a game and more of a complex fantasy world simulation. Made by one guy over 20 years, and probably for the rest of his natural and unnatural lifespan, as we plan to crowdfund Tarn Adams a synthetic body so he can focus on what truly matters. Dwarf Fortress really is one of the greatest autism projects to ever blossom. Fun fact, it's also the hardest game to run on PC. Even an i7 processor chokes and dies the moment you forget to sterilize your cats. If not for the ever-increasing technological demands of Dwarf Fortress, AMD and what? Intel now I'm scared of this right now. To even begin playing Dwarf Fortress, you'll need some prescription medication. But more importantly, you'll need a world to play in. So, we create one, we set some parameters, and the game will then calculate 250 fucking years of history for this randomly generated world. And, depending on your computer, this may also take 250 50 years. Once the world is made, it's all yours. And like an abusive lover, she will caress and beat you senseless. And each time, you'll come back for more. There's two main game modes you can play in Dwarf Fortress. You can either choose to embark on distant lands and lead a fortress to ruin, or die horrifically in the pursuit of adventure. To begin, let's cover fortress mode first. All you have to do is pick a nice place to embark, and that's about it. Despite common myths, Dwarf Fortress isn't complicated. Just follow a couple of tutorials and you'll be a seasoned veteran in no time. You should also download and use the Lazy Noob Pack because the game is almost unplayable without it. Some may disagree with this statement, but to put it simply, they're fucking wrong. These same people will disagree with my choice of tile set or the fact that I use a tile set at all. To answer these concerns and make this video that much easier to watch, I will be using all of the tile sets at random. In fortress mode, you start out with seven dwarves, given the difficult task of establishing civilization. The longer you survive and flourish, the more migrants will arrive from neighboring cities, attracted by the promise of your growing fortress. From there on, any number of things can happen. Disaster, tragedy, invasions, and tantrums I'm getting spirals, cancer from the UI, though. Your fort like, real cancer. Moment. But whether you live or die, just remember, losing is fun. It's impossible to cover everything. So, let me tell you some stories. The first fortress I ever founded was absolutely terrible. We had no metal, so instead we fought with sticks and traded pottery for any possible scrap of metal. We also lived in constant fear. There was a were zebra on the loose. He kept eating my chickens and trampling my dwarves. As if I couldn't escape the furry menace in real life, it torments me in my video games as well. It turned out that the were zebra was a human musician who plays a plays at my tavern, so I let him stay and snap a few chicken necks every month. The place was actually quite successful. Five years on and no major invasions. What the hell? I asked my friend, who knows Dwarf Fortress, to take a look. He came back shocked and told me, you're not at war with the goblins. How? I had no idea. My fortress was a place of culture and learning, of drunken revelry and international diplomatic renown. Life 
proceeded as normal. And then, one day, one of my guests of honor, a legendary human wrestler, had too much to drink and went into a murderous rage. He proceeded to grab a goblin dancer and pulled off her lower jaw. As she was screaming, he began thrashing her with her own jawbone. The situation quickly deteriorated as she retaliated back. My other dwarves, upon seeing that a man was under attack and, fearing for his life, used appropriate self-defense to remove the assailant's ability to chew food, launched into a furious brawl. It was a bloodbath that marked the beginning of a race riots. Every goblin in my fortress was slaughtered. For our acts of racial cleansing, the goblins had declared war on us, one we couldn't win, and all because some retard couldn't handle his mushroom wine. Several months later, my fortress was swallowed by the Green Horde. Those who weren't murdered walled themselves off, went crazy and consumed each other. The rest starved to death. Dwarf Fortress, a fun, light-hearted experience for the whole family. My second fortress fared slightly better, until I dug too deep. My third? Well, we all know how this ends already, right? One of my dwarves got possessed, so I walled off his workshop, forgot about it, and accidentally opened up his crypt. In the middle of town, the nauseous fumes from his hot, decomposing body erupted across several levels, driving everyone insane from the sight and stench of his swollen cadaver. In the chaos, a mother dropped her toddler into a shallow pool of water. The child drowned, <laughs> causing the mother to go into a what tantrum scary, and attack dude. an experienced axe dwarf, who decapitated her. The dead bodies caused more tantrums, which would result in even more dead bodies, which eventually reduced my population to a single person, a single axe dwarf, who was now considered legendary, having gained enough experience from beheading everybody else. My fourth attempt was actually fine. The fortress still stands as a grisly reminder of why we have health and safety. I read online somewhere that you could train your dwarves extremely quickly by constructing a danger room. The idea is simple. We put a dwarf in a room filled with traps, we activate them, and our brave warriors Stop will gracefully dodge and block every single one of them. But this process wasn't fast enough, so we replaced the traps with coins. We hit the lever and 500 freshly minted coins would harmlessly ricochet at high speed across the room, turning our dwarves into professional soldiers instantly. However, it didn't work. 500 coins suddenly ricocheted at high speed and destroyed my dwarf's windpipe. Even the best surgeons available <laughs> couldn't operate quick enough to restore oxygen supply. The cause of death I can't even tell if he's trolling off the time or not. Like, is he actually tender. throwing not coins? To be or? I tried to optimize coin training. I made my men wear five layers of cotton it's, around it's their not. necks. The results several women were now widows, and about a dozen men were now buried without a throat. It turns out coins are very dangerous. Attempt number five, my current and final fortress. In the One game? day, I received a oh notification. My One of my master engravers had just sculpted a masterpiece on the dining room wall. I find the engraving and read the description. He just sculpted a drawing of himself stabbing another dwarf. And soon after, he actually stabbed him. What an absolute lad. This was also about the time I decided to embark on a haunted biome. And my personal advice, don't do that. Nothing dies on a haunted biome. The moment you kill an animal, it gets back up. The moment you chop off a limb, it gets possessed and tries to choke you. Did you know this applies to shellfish and crustaceans as well? I didn't, but I've just lost a good fisherman to an undead pile of lobster shells. If all of this sounds like too much to handle, then you can play Adventure Mode instead. Adventure Mode lets you design and control a single character that can interact with, influence, and shape the world. Once again, it's impossible to cover everything. So, instead, I'll share some of my characters exploits. The very first character I ever made was a human, locally renowned for his acts of heroism. I didn't know the controls and didn't really care. I spent my entire time accusing children of being vampires and throwing silver at them until they died. No one dared intervene in my righteous crusade against darkness. Incidentally, one of the people I accused was actually a vampire, who proceeded to kill me instantly to get rid of the evidence. My second character was a kobold who had successfully integrated with modern civilization. To demonstrate how integrated I was, I immediately assassinated the king. To my surprise, the guards didn't even care. My reward for committing regicide was monarchy. I had become the new ruler of this kingdom. I spent the rest of my career spreading rumors that the previous king was murdered 
by myself. Everyone refused to believe it and said I, the king, was full of shit. My third <laughs> character managed to find a really nice book, a book of necromancy, which I generously donated to one of my fortress libraries. After retiring from adventuring and checking up on the place, I was pleasantly surprised to find the place overrun with undead. Then, I got bored and installed some lore-friendly mods. Currently, I'm playing as Vegeta, a local Saiyan prince who accidentally used instant transmission to teleport to hell. There, I learned that the wrestling system in Dwarf Fortress is extremely is elaborate, allowing Vegeta to choke hold demons while he plucks out their necks. After returning from the underworld, Vegeta spent several hours vomiting on townspeople and indirectly killed a child by doing push-ups. Later that day, an elvish serf refused to yield to the Saiyan prince. He rejected his generous demands for both of his shoes in exchange for his life. Now, I'm not very good at Dragon Ball Z lore, but I don't remember Vegeta being able to make Destructo Discs. But who gives a shit? In this mod, he can. So, I decapitated a bunch of elves with energy discs and turned into a giant ape. Then I got drunk and crawled on the floor, stealing people's genitals. In case you haven't figured this out already, Dwarf Fortress is an amazing amazing game. And not only that, it's unique. There's nothing quite like it. It's a sandbox and you make your own fun. And if you get bored of sand, there's a billion mods out there which make the game that much more intricate and entertaining. Sure, it's hard to get into, but then again, so are nursing homes. I give it a perfect score. Uh, Perfection it is very Which is why everyone will see something different. Very hard. Or something gay. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. To this video it. comes out much later than expected. What's up with that, Seth? You lazy schmuck. You've not even taken our money since November. Truth be told, I took a corporate position in December. Then, I realized I can do a hundred times more by myself. So, I'm going all in. Seth is going full time. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild who have been generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. I missed the chance to say this before, so Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and have a Happy New Year. It's, like, it seems like it's a lot of fun. It seems so overwhelming. It seems like a Heroes of Might and Magic, but on, on like super steroid next level shit, right? But a hundred times worse UI. Pretty much. At least in adventure mode. What the fuck is this? This guy seems pretty funny to me. I like his humor. His videos are, are that video at least. Uh, that's the only one I've seen. But he does other reviews too. Um... <laughs> yes. I don't know. He had some next level hyperbole analogies and etc. Thank you. PlayStation 13. Is that uh, I've seen? I s it's a new game, right? That's been in beta for a while. Uh, oh, it's uh, it's his reviews. Yeah. Uh, we can check it out next time. I don't know if I want to. <sighs> How long will it take for me to like? Like, it seems so ridiculous. Like, throw coins and accuse childs of being vampires. Like, what can you not do in this game? And how do I know what I should do in this game? You know? Like, what the fuck? I guess there's no harm in trying it. But then it's like, I have to do all this modding stuff now. And I'm fucking terrible at that shit. Like, there was some noob-friendly UI mod or something. Without it, it was garbage. And everyone who said no and no, not really, are fucking retarded, according to this guy. Or what was it? <clears throat> uh yeah, we, we we might we might check it out actually. Uh, might check it out. Might check it out. I think that the fortress mod is too much for me, but adventure mod probably works out for me. 
I wait for the Steam release. If you're seriously interested, you won't be able to launch the game otherwise. Oh, so there is a Steam release. Do you have a Do you have a date for that? Is there a date? That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. I had a hard time playing this game. I think. I think I died to something. What did I die to? Fucking AIDS or something. Watch his space station 13 video plus or M said frown. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Welcome Last to one. Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Today, I'll be covering a very niche, very infamous, and very autistic game that everyone's asked me to cover since day one. A game where you and many other real, living people with questionable social intelligence roleplay together on the worst space station in the universe, where aliens, shapeshifters, and traitors working for rival corporations are the least of your concern, where the greatest threat to your own Is existence this are your own crew members. Hungry? Come to the station can where the food is definitely poisoned. Injured? Yes. Head on down to medical, where half a medication has been relabeled as happy pills. Discouraged? You can try taking a painkiller instead. But it wasn't a painkiller, it was LSD. Having a bad trip? Don't worry, there's a security officer nearby to help, but he can't respond because he was murdered and replaced by a genetically modified monkey wearing his uniform. <laughs> Hallucinating? Keep calm and focus on what's real. Unfortunately for you, the a supermassive black hole expanding towards you is not a hallucination. It is, in fact, very real. The emergency shuttle has been called. Welcome to Space Station 13. Space Station 13 has a very simple premise. Everyone has a job. Your objective? Do your best to delay the station's inevitable destruction, either at the hands of antagonists or at the hands of your own incompetent crew. Normally, I give a final score for a game at the end of a video. Not this time. Space Space Station 13, 10 out of 10, amazing, spectacular, don't play it. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, Space Station 13 is a fantastic game, but I genuinely don't recommend you play it. Why? Because the engine it's running on is probably older than you, because the interface is a convoluted mess, and only usable because me and every other autistic chimpanzee who plays this game has committed the hotkeys to muscle memory because of the insane time investment and commitment required for you to learn a single role, and because, to be perfectly honest, the servers can't handle all oh. of you. At best, we can handle, like, so 30 it, how extra long players do you play before one game you grind for? the servers to a halt. For all these reasons, Space Station 13 always was, and always will be, a niche title. I run and an maybe, hour. that's for the best. But, I can offer you something else. I've already killed your hopes and dreams of playing the game, so instead, let me share some stories of my wonderful experience with Space Station 13. These stories span several years and several different servers, the names of which will forever stay anonymous because I respect their privacy and because I've received threats from some of the more colorful servers to not mention them by name or else. What's gonna happen if I don't comply? Are they gonna hire a Bitcoin assassin to run me over with his mobility scooter? Is he gonna stab me with his insulin pen? I don't know, but between you and me, I hate having come delivered to my mailbox and would prefer to keep it that way. Anyway, I remember the first time playing Space Word. Station very vividly. Word. My friends told me to download it and hop on some shitty server. It had furries and erotic roleplay. More on that later. I enter the round as an assistant. My job to give assistance and to get my hands burnt off trying to hack into places I don't have access to. As I'm screwing around with airlock wires, my friend comes running down the hallway dragging someone's unconscious body. Body. Frantically, he tells me, Seth, quick, can you open this door? Sensing the urgency in his voice, I do. He throws the body inside and sprints away. The airlock closes. Three seconds later, something explodes. What the fuck was that? I ask. Oh yeah, I fed him potassium and water pills. It takes a while to metabolize. My friend had just murdered a man in cold blood by turning his body into a living, ticking potassium bomb. As soon as the man's digestive juices cracked through the potassium tablet, it reacted violently 
with the water in his stomach and exploded, killing him from inside out. After such a horrific display of homicide, I realized, hey, this game's pretty good. Fast forward a few weeks and I'm learning roles, calling shots weeks. and ignoring Jesus, every single dude. rule of a server. I also ignored every single rule of medicine. I was a surgeon, top of my class, destined to go where no licensed professional ever has. Also, my friend's girlfriend started playing with us. To put it bluntly, she wasn't very good, but she was very interested in progressing the medical field in any way possible. Cargo had just delivered us some complimentary pizza. As thanks for patching up their boys after they got a little too intimate with a xenomorphs on mining station. Brilliance flashed before my eyes. My pupils widened. I started physically sweating because she said the words I've always dreamt of hearing. Please turn me into a pizza. And so I got to work. Nurse, get me my scalpel, tweezers, protractor, bone gel, and the rest of the unfinished pizza. One horrified clown watched in the operating theater as I cleanly hacked off and cauterized her hands and feet. I opened the pizza box and began attaching her new cheesy limbs. Help! Sec to surgery, the clown blurted out. He's turning her into a Papa John's. The head of medical stormed in Come with on, a bro. host of security officers to detain me, but they were too late. Her hands and feet had already been replaced. Surprisingly, she could walk just fine on a pair of pizza feet, but her lack of opposable pizza thumbs meant that she couldn't really hold anything, let alone pick them up in the first place. However, her pizza hands did make for a convenient and portable source of nutrition. Despite her numerous protests that she consented to the surgery, the head of medical demoted me on the spot and banned me from ever practicing medicine, claiming that you can't consent to being a pizza. I was thrown in jail for the rest of a round. Clearly, there was no appreciation for the arts on this station. So, many rounds later, me and my friends found a new purpose, cleaning up the server one erotic furry roleplay at a time. Using telecommunications and metacommunications, I expertly pinpointed areas of high homosexual intent namely the dorm rooms and the showers. As two Khajiit looking cat men meet privately with one another, they will inevitably start writing words such as, ooh, Mayak has a barbed prickly surprise for you, my friend. And, mmm, yes, not me with your thick Tajaran trunk. This is completely unacceptable. Once an act of high homosexual <laughs> intent is in motion, several of our men would mobilize. As they groan, moan, and spit out hairballs on each other, a security officer would barge in, flashbang the feline fornicators, and tag team baton them into submission before another officer handcuffs them to the bed. On the other side of a contaminated How is this not dorm room, our team's atmospheric technician sets explosive C4 charges against the station glass. Quickly, we evacuate evacuate the biohazard exclusion zone and seal the airlocks. Homeo and Juliet barely have enough time to recover from the flashbang before the charges detonate, depressurizing the room and sucking their bodies out if into the black chat vacuum in this game, of space. That would Another be job the well done. Like Many explosive decompressions later, erotic but... roleplay was considered a real occupational hazard. The Tajaran cat boys got creative, started doing group sessions instead, but these were quickly crushed by my friend playing the best roboticist I've ever seen in my life. The airlock doors to their sodomy chamber were welded shut to prevent interruptions, so he drilled right through them with a gigantic combat mech. The air inside was heavy with a sickly sweet smell of wet fur balls and toxoplasmosis. <laughs> the furries didn't even have time to react before he started reloading shell after shell of flashbang grenades. And thus, we all got <laughs> banned. We paid the price. But to see half a server get flashbang unconscious for 10 minutes straight? Priceless. The server didn't last long anyway. The admin's mom shut it down as soon as she saw the electricity bill. So, me and my friends went on to enrich other servers. I even got good at being a chemist. In other words, I always stole the syringe gun at the start of a round and filled it with lethal doses of chloral hydrate. For my own protection, of course. I also gave whatever chemical anyone requested, which gives me some moral ambiguity and two degrees of separation from any pranks or murders that took place as a result of said chemicals. If a clown asks for space lube, he's gonna get space lube. One time, a clown managed to lube the entire hallway outside of medical, all the way to departures. Now, departures is usually the place where the escape shuttle docks to get us out of our quickly burning heap of a station. However, if there's no call for a shuttle, departures is completely empty, besides the airlock, which the clown had hacked open. Several people came running through 
medical, slipped on the space lube, and accelerated <laughs> themselves face first into the infinite vacuum of space. Dude, security how are the physics so accurate in such a in shitty true game? Security fashion, also slipped on the space lube. With most of the crew <laughs> floating around dead in space, the station had to be evacuated. He was later banned from playing clown ever again. Several rounds later, I finally spawned as a traitor. Mission specifications decrypted. Welcome to the Syndicate. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I wanted my first time to be special. Conveniently, an assistant comes in, bleeding all over, because he was probably trying to break into the armory without insulated gloves. His character sprite had maximum melanin and an afro. His roleplay friendly name was Madik, an idiot, but a useful <laughs> idiot. There were no medical staff on hand except me, so I said, hey, I know a little bit of surgery, let me fix you up. I put him under general anesthetic and took out my syndicate PDA. With this, I can discreetly teleport a few traitor items into my inventory to help me achieve my objective, which in this case was murdering the head of security. I ordered two sets of voice activated explosives, which trigger upon hearing the recorded code phrase. I set this to the word most likely to be spoken by this mentally retarded human being. <laughs> can you guess what that is? Uh, I what? surgically <laughs> opened his ass and inserted the first of the explosives. Then I lodged the second one neatly inside his chest cavity. Closing them up, I took off the anesthetic and began to put my plan in action. I would arm this simple-minded moron with illegal weaponry with the hopes that security <laughs> would detain him on possession charges. I gave oh, him all the LSD, all the chloral hydrate syringes, and an entire spray bottle of space lube. I had expertly equipped him to be the ultimate griefing machine. Proud of my work, I gave him a hug and said, him loose on the world, but just before he left medical, he turned around and said, thanks nigger. And we both exploded. My other times playing antagonist went about just as well. Once I started as the leader of a cult, our objective was to seize control of the station and sacrifice our mortal bodies to summon a physical manifestation of our dark god. However, I wasn't very good at it, and neither were my servants. We found a nice, quiet, and most importantly, abandoned bar near the north end of the station, which we began redecorating with our own blood. You see, cultists need to learn a set of ancient words that's randomly generated every round. If you arrange them in the right order, you can perform different spells and rituals to advance your goals. We didn't get far, because the most can dangerous thing to an incompetent random? cult is a single crew member doing their job. The fucking janitor found us. We tried to random. negotiate, convince him that it's no. actually crayon and not blood all over the floor, but that didn't work, so we tried to murder him instead. That didn't work either. He used his mop to slip us with soapy water and ran off to call security. As you can see, I'm not very proficient at being a traitor. More often, I find myself How does being it get abused this, uh, traitors. Some of the worst view, offenders in this regard from other are definitely people. wizards. Is it like a replay Since wizards function have a something? bad tendency to sexually abuse me as well. Not too long ago, me and my friends played a round that was already in progress. As soon as we entered, we realized something was very wrong. An announcement played on the radio. Penis Sir. Inspection day is in effect. All crew members must report to Doc Johnson for oh, their mandatory penis inspection. Like Doc Johnson was very clearly right? a wizard. I knew what was coming, was and yet I resigned myself to fate and went to medical reception. Doc Johnson was overjoyed to have new patients. He led me to a private room, asked me if I'm circumcised, and told me that I passed the inspection with flying colors. What a surprise, I thought. He's not actually gonna grief me. But I was wrong. As I turned away to leave, he he blew off my ass magically. Hey, it's wizardry. I ain't gotta explain shit. Anyway, Doc Johnson is a terrible doctor. He left me bleeding on the floor as he took my ass cheeks and used them as a hat. Highly unprofessional, would not recommend. A round of Space Station 13 can be very intense. At other times, it can be very slow paced and almost relaxing. If you're not a traitor and you don't have anything urgent to handle, you can always just role play and get comfy in a bar while the piano plays anime songs and the jukebox plays whatever deep-fried ASMR bullshit people keep putting on. It's a very wholesome experience, and it helps you get emotionally Scotland invested forever. with the other members of your crew, which are often nice people. However, security is often staffed by egotistical megalomaniacs acting out their most depraved power fantasies. They are often not nice people. As a result of their inherent propensity to be insane sociopaths, the rest of the crew will often rebel against their tyranny. In one such case, Cargo had declared independence 
independence, security refused to recognize the independent station state of Cargonia. So they tried to barge their way in and arrest everyone involved, including me. But security was unprepared for the trap we had in store. One officer rushed into Cargo Bay and slipped on a banana peel straight into the conveyor belt waiting for him. He tried repeatedly to get back up, only to be tripped again by an ocean of banana peels on the conveyor belt, which looped around in a circle. Surrounding that circle was another circle, composed entirely of vending machines. The officer was also being brutally assaulted by several hundred cans of soda. The vending machines were hacked, and as a result, they would continuously fire drinks at whoever is in the area. Each officer that slipped into the banana belt got smashed unconscious by a relentless stream of discount Dan soda. Trademark, all rights reserved. After extensive head trauma by our soda turrets, security reluctantly accepted Cargonia's independence and their right to bear arms. If there's one department that has more revolutions than cargo, it would have to be science, and it's easy to understand why. We spend our lives researching a way for the good of a station, which does of course carry its own share of risks and hazards. Sometimes, accidents happen. Sooner or later, some bored and mentally challenged assistant will try and put a bag of holding into another bag of holding, and security can't always comprehend that we're not directly responsible for the resulting black hole eating through the kitchen. This a lack bag of, of appreciation for the scientific holding. profession usually ends with arrest warrants for the whole department, which is usually answered back with the words, I'd like to see you try. But when we're not having a nuclear arms race with security, R&D is actually quite a chill department. I also made a great discovery last time I played there. Me and another scientist were messing around with blueprints and eventually made ourselves a pneumatic cannon. Normally, these are used to launch whatever items you have inside. What we didn't know was that it could launch food as well. I loaded a lasagna, aimed for the mouth, and fired it at my fellow researcher. The lasagna disappeared. What the hell? That's amazing, he said. We just realized what happened. I had just managed to remotely force feed my fellow man. But what do we do with this forbidden knowledge? Nothing good, that's for sure. My comrade got to work asking chemistry for hallucinogenic drugs. They said no. So we built our own chemistry dispensers, filled up the beakers with happy juice, and ran straight to the kitchen. We injected all the donuts and hot pockets we could find with as much LSD and mind breaker toxin as they could hold. Then we loaded them into our food delivery system and started firing off at everyone in the hallways. The food was instantly delivered. The crew was instantly satisfied. Several people, including security officers, managed to see the two small lines of text indicating that they've just been fed something. They thought it was extremely clever and said they didn't know the pneumatic cannon could do that. Since it was just a bit of harmless fun, we got off scot-free. Minutes later, the hallucination started. Crew members started screaming on the radio. Some were puking, shaking, or convulsing on the ground. Medical couldn't keep up with the bodies. They piled on too quick, and most of the doctors were too busy fighting off non-existent entities to do anything about it. The chemist, who originally refused to give us LSD, was arrested by security on suspicion of intentional food poisoning. It was complete pandemonium, and I think it illustrates perfectly the chaos that is Space Station 13. Do you ever win one of these games? Like, it feels like there's so many things that can fuck everything up. No one ever fucking wins. That's all I have for you today, folks. There is, of course, more stories to tell, but we'd literally be here for hours. Space Station 13, a marvelous, unique, and incredibly shitty game. 10 out of 10, don't play it, because if you do, they're gonna blame it on me, and I hate having cum in my mailbox. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. On other news, I started a Subscribestar account, so if you'd like to invest and don't want to give... Well, he says don't play it. I don't know. It feels like he's like, okay, so this is how I feel about it. He played these games for like weeks, right? If not, you know, month and a half or whatever, right? I have 3.7k rounds of Space Station 13. You never win.
3.7k in every round lost maybe on average 35 minutes because you rage quit some and some you go for the full uh, whatever hour or whatever it is that's a lot of hours into space station Well, can't you review? I uh, nah, no, I tomorrow. I I can't. She. I also actually played Kenshi. And that was. I don't know. What the, I don't know what the fuck to do. Like these games are, the UI is so fucking terrible. That I don't know what the fuck to do. I don't know what the fuck to do. I might, I might uh, give this Dwarf Fortress or Space Station 13. Space Station 13 seemed like a lot of fun because it's multiplayer. But Dwarf Fortress probably seems like a better game. I'll add them on my, you know, potential to-do list. Potential to-do list, but uh, yeah, that's for a later, later day, a later day.